Kwanko so set to unveil presidential blueprint on November 1. And tonight on civic education, we assess good governance and accountability at the grassroots. This is Cross Politics. I'm Mary Anako. The presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, Senator Rabi Kwankoso, on November 1 will unveil his presidential blueprint. A statement by the NNPP on Tuesday uh, said the unveiling of the presidential blueprint and the third RMK colloquium uh, were postponed following requests from members across the country after due consultations with stakeholders. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Ladikbo Johnson. He is spokesperson for the Kwankwaso Campaign Council. It's so good to have you join us, Mr. Ladikbo. You see, it's interesting. The last time you were here, you were just Ladikbo Johnson. <laughs> and then the next time you got here, you were placeholder. Placeholder. And now you're here. No, I'm <laughs> yes, <a> spokesperson. <laughs> Uh, Very, uh, how things have progressed. Uh, I, I, I like that trajectory. Uh, no problem. We thank God. <laughs> Thanks so, for having me. Good evening. Always a pleasure. Let's start by, um, you know, I, I've spoke, I spoke with um, your presidential candidate, I think, um, two weeks ago, if I'm not yes, mistaken, uh, when he was here in Lagos to um, uh, open some offices here. Yes. yes. Um, but then things have changed in those weeks. We've seen, you know, lots of things happen in the country. But first, I want to start by um, looking at his position and his place between some of the front runners uh, in this election. You know, um, most people would say it's a three-horse race. Some others will say it's a four-horse race. Others have called him a spoiler, that he's just there to divide votes. Well, what would you say about uh, Rabi Kwanko so in this regard? Well, I'll say that... Um he is in this race to win. Mm -hmm. um, he is not a spoiler. If his existence or the um, existence of the NMPP or the growth of the NMPP spoils anyone's votes, so be it. Um, he has a message for the people of the country. As you said, by the 1st of November, um, he will unveil his blueprint, um, which will involve his commitment to the people of the country, his plans, and then the projections. Mm. It's going to be a very detailed paper. Mm. Um, and um, I know that once Nigerians see this document, and um, they will know that this is a man who means business, who's ready to hit the ground running, um, if he's given the opportunity. So, but um, back to your question, um, I see him um, as one who has an advantage. He has an advantage when it comes to experience. He's, um, he's known to have been, or known to be a performer um, in all that he has done. Now, I understand why people would um, wrongly um, say this is a three horse race. Mm -hmm. And that is because um, I think quite intentionally, I don't know why, or well, he's a strategist, quite intentionally, we've spent the last two, three months um, energizing our base. Um, by energizing our base, what I mean is that he's been going around opening offices, as you said, he came into Lagos, and he's done that around the country in the core north, in the north, northern part, I think there are only about two or three states he hasn't visited. Um, and he's visited most in the south, in the southern part as well. So we've been going around opening our offices, commissioning our offices, talking to the stakeholders there. Um, this is key because you know that we came into the NNPP just in March. And to see what we have achieved in a few months shows you um, his grassroots appeal to the masses of the country. Um, he is better placed, I dare say, than the other three that we talk about all the time. Mm. And um, I'm sure as we discuss, maybe um, I'll get the opportunity to tell you some of the things he's done 
and why we believe that he is the person to lead us in the next four years vis-a-vis -vis where we are at at the present moment as a country mm. with the economic difficulties, the insecurity and um, despondency basically amongst Nigerians. You should go to the airport, you see how many people are leaving every day out of the country. So um, it's, it's a sad situation, but it's a situation that we can correct as a people. And, um, but to do that, you need a good shepherd and you need someone to lead. And I believe Konkoso has the attributes to lead us in the right direction. Many talk about base, many talk about structure, you know, um, and this has been um, what the big, supposedly big political parties are using against parties like yours or even the Labour Party saying that, you know, um, having a movement somewhere in the north is not enough base for you to win an election because this mm. is a game of numbers. And in, in terms of your uh, presidential candidates, of course, he does have the Kwankwasia movement, but that is mostly in the north. Um, mm. so, well? Yes, it's, it's, uh, you just told me that you have opened offices across the country, but yeah. what is the structure of the NNP? Remember, you just said you also started, if you joined yes, the NNP. Yes, let me explain it to you. The Kwankwasia movement is the biggest political movement outside the two major parties. By what standards? By standards of membership and, and, and the structures. I tell you. Now... But it's domicile in Kanu. No, and maybe no, no. Some you, you have, look, it's like talking about Bola Chinumbu. Well, you don't do that. What does he have outside Lagos? He doesn't, as a person, he doesn't have what Konkozo has. But they are relying on the fact that the APC is the ruling party. But look at it from that point of view. What does he have? The membership. Well, well, the membership. His party members would make that case that he's a, the godfather of politics in the southwest of the country, being that he's somewhat had a hand he, if he in were, most of the governors who If he men. were such a successful godfather, he really, really only had Ocean State, who is outgoing now, and Lagos, of course. Um, Ondo was an independent man, Ekiti, not really his. Oyo, they didn't win at all. So, you know, but we're not here to talk about um, Ashwaju Tinumbu. We're here to talk about um, the NMPP and Konkozo. And you, be, you see, the, um, the structure was there. The NMPP is a 21-year-old party. So I don't know who... But if they hadn't won an election, they would have been deregistered. Mm. They were there, and there was a meeting of minds. We came into the NMPP in March, and we've been growing the party. You will know, you, if you recall, there was a TNM, the national movement, that Konkozo first mm -hmm. came together with some individuals when he left the PDP. And then they joined with the Konkosia movement, and then we all moved into the NMPP. And I always say that Kwonkozo's base and the NMPP base are what I call organic, organic mm. um, supporters. Most people have either, are either moving from APC to this, to that, to that, to that. But most, when you see someone putting on a red cap, or white and red, or what have you, and the females as well, they're usually people who are long-suffering. They've been with him. I've been with Konkozo since 2013. And I'm in the South here. And I'm Lagos State Coordinator of the Kwankwasia Movement. And we have a movement in Ogun, Oyo, Oshun. We have it going in the Southwest. So the fact that we haven't been in government here mm. would not let you, let us propel, would not have allowed us to propel our work, maybe into the streets. But as I keep saying to people, I mean, look at two, two Wednesdays ago when we had opened the office on Ikorodu Road. I know that some people, some of my friends called to complain because of the traffic we caused and what have you. And most people were like, wow, we didn't know you had people in Lagos. And I keep, kept telling them that, oh, so I'm not a person. You know I'm here and there are many others here as well. But you see, it isn't just, um, some will say, oh, it's just uh, maybe the Arewa community. 
in Lagos. It's not that, just the Arewa community. But the Arewa community in Lagos is a good base to sit on at top of. Hmm. So you have, you have all these things. And it is when the campaigns or campaigning begins properly. It has started, you understand. Some have started rallies and what have you. Atiku has done some and what have you. But when he starts to move round, and this time, moving round with the press, getting the message into the houses of Nigerians, then people will know that, yes, maybe there's even just a two-horse race, mm -hmm. and he will be one of the horses. Interesting. Interesting. Let's talk about the national appeal of the NNPP, because, again, um, the APC, the PDP, they've all held power at some point. Yes. Yes. And, and then, of course, um, now that we have the um, OB phenomenon and the movement, and now we have the Kwankoso or the Kwankosia movement, what's the national appeal? I ask this because I always ask politicians. At this point, Nigeria seems to need a unifier, somebody who would bring us together because we have seriously been divided along ethnic and religious lines, and these lines have not necessarily been blood under this administration. What's the national appeal of the NMPP and how do they hope to blur these lines? Because again, I, have, I asked your presidential candidate a question. He didn't give me the answer as I hoped for. Um, I said, it seems more like this election is more of a regional election because most of these people seem to be re, you know, representing regional interest as opposed to a yeah. Nigerian interest. The, the unfortunate situation is that it seems to be as if they're representing regional interests because, unfortunately, Nigerians, after the seven, eight years that we have had of this government, feel that some eth one ethnic group has dominated the others. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's looking at, um, to use his phrase, his word, you understand? But um, we need a unifier. But our minds open to it. Aren't we just still, on average, um, he's a Christian, he's a Muslim, oh, he's Yoruba, oh, he's Igbo. You understand? And this market is usually a market of demand and supply. Mm. If the people want something, and you're coming out and saying, oh, it's like having an election. And the people are hell-bent on collecting gari and t-shirts and whatever from the candidates. And you come out and you start to tell them things that will improve their lives. They'll still go and vote for the person inducing them. So the people, we the Nigerians, have to be ready. Hmm. But that said and done, I can assure you that the NMPP, is very Nigerian in outlook. The name itself, New Nigeria People's Party. The founder of the party is an Igbo man mm. from Eastern Extraction. He is the chairman of the Board of Trustees. The national chairman is from the Northeast, the candidate Northwest. The vice president from the South. So, the, the, the NMPP is um, a party with a nationalistic outlook. But we realize, as our name depicts, mm. that we all crave for a new Nigeria. Mm. If we continue in the direction we're going, there will be no Nigeria anymore. What do you bring to the table when you say we all crave for a new Nigeria? What will you do out of the ordinary that would make the average Nigerian voter look in your direction? Because you see... I, Nigerians have heard the whole, you know, story of we're going to bring hope or change. I mean, these mantras seem to be very tiring now and Nigerians are over it. So what is the NMPP bringing? Well, the, the, the first thing is um, we cannot stop hoping. That's the first thing. We, we, we're all despondent. We're all unhappy about the situation mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in. Yet we all have a part to play. Yeah. Because I keep saying, if we do not get the small or little things right, the bigger picture will not, the bigger thing will not fall into place. Mm. Now, what are we bringing 
especially talking about the presidential election now. What are we bringing to the table? We're bringing someone who has the political will to act. He's someone who has a track record from 17 years meritorious service in the civil service as an engineer to being a member of the um, Constituent Assembly to being the deputy speaker of the National Assembly in the House of Reps, then governor for four years. He lost his re-election. Then he became minister for defense in a time when we're talking about insecurity. He has that experience. Then he also has international experience. He was um, um, the special envoy to Darfur and Somalia mm. at a time. Mm. Then he was a board member of the NDDC representing the Northwest, and he resigned from that board because of the sharp practices that were happening at that time. Then came back to be governor for the second term and then um, senator for four years. Now, within that time, you can have someone in government, I always say, what sort of experience? The fact that they have experience doesn't mean anything. How, did they do well? His track record is there. We make bold to say no one is perfect, but we make bold to say that none of those who are there against him have what, have what he has. But there's a key to it. I want to tell you two things that will make you know that Rabiu Konkoso is for Nigeria. One, when he became deputy speaker, during that election then, that is MK Abiola's election, he defeated Bashir Tofa of the NRC mm. in his same polling unit, same polling booth, not local government, not ward. He did that. So he was a Hausa man. And he supported a Yoruba man as MQ Abiola. So that, that is key to see the, his outlook. What is even more important is that when he wanted to run for re-election the first time and lost out to Shekharao, it was because he was supporting a southern Christian, Obasanjo, against um, President Buhari, who at that time had the overwhelming support of the um, no, Muslims no, in no, Kano. And they kept saying, are you voting church, which was Kwonkoso, who is the Muslim, are you voting for the church, or are you voting for the mosque? Hmm. And he lost his reaction. But when he knew things were going down, he didn't leave Obasanjo. He supported him to the end. And of course, he did his youth, youth service here in hmm. Abelkuta. So he is a Nigerian in the outlook. Now, a lot of people do not know enough about him. And that lies on us who say we so, we're supporting him. We have to let Nigerians know. We have four months to let them know that this man is Nigerian in outlook and he will be fair to all and work for all. Hmm. Let's talk about some of the recent happenings in the country. Let's start with the fact that the seat of power is being threatened as we speak. Yes. And that information did not necessarily come from our security agencies. It did come from the United States Embassy or consular here in Nigeria. Yes. And, and now we're, we hear that schools are shut down, certain offices are not working as they should. Um, what, what, what would the NNPP do in terms of you know, insecurity? Because this government came on to power on the wings of, you know, they wrote on the wings of we're going to put an end to insecurity. They would say to us that they have pushed Boko Haram to the fringes uh, but then we have other issues like banditry, like, you know, killer herdsmen, unknown gunmen. And, and I mean, the list is endless. Um, also, we realize that there are now more pockets of violence and insecurity, terrorism in local communities, as opposed to in the main cities where we have a more, a more concentration of security agents. Well, the first thing I'll say is that um, <laughs> um, the blueprint coming out as i said um the blueprint is i think is broken into three basically mm -hmm. for each thing he talks about his commitments to nigerians mm -hmm. then he goes on to talk about his plan on each one and then we talk about projections that's a sneak preview mm. it's it's a it's a detailed document mm. now that handles the issue of insecurity, defense, the police, everything in detail. Mm. And um, I shouldn't 
talk before, I, I mean, by next week it will be out there. But basically, he was Minister for Defense at a time where, yes, they spent a lot on defense, but where the country stood tall and was still sending people to help other countries in Africa. Um, he's gained experience from that. He, <clears throat> as I said, even as governor in Kano, he was able to um, help the defense forces and even the local vigilante. And that is why to date, you still see that Kano, the commercial nerve center of the Northwest hasn't suffered from all the things the others have suffered. Hasn't suffered as much mm. from all the things the others have suffered. It was the infrastructure, the infrastructure they put down at that time. But what will he do differently? As I said, we will, we will, you will see that in a few days' time. So, um, but, um, this is a, the, a best kept secret until November Well, until I don't November want to one. be fired before I'm hired. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about the issue of flooding. Um, yes. This is one of the most troubling issues that we've faced other than insecurity. We've seen cities, villages literally, you know, go down underwater. Um, I was watching a report by a CNN correspondent who's a very tall guy from Kenya, yeah. <laughs> and the water was literally at yeah. his waist. waist yeah. Now, for those who are experts who are looking into the matter, we are going to be facing food insecurity. Yes. Um, we're, we're also going to be seeing all kinds of diseases born mm -hmm. from, you know, the water. Uh, people are losing businesses, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you think the government has handled this issue well? I ask because yesterday is from yesterday, as a result of yesterday's um, neck meeting, um, some of the ministers spoke. The minister of transport, um, the minister of works spoke, um, Raju Fashala. Um, the also the minister of uh, I think water resources. Uh, they all spoke about the fact that it seemed more like the blame was on Nigerians that they were told to move and they didn't move. But then of course we also know about the dam story that has taken forever exactly. to be built. Um, and they're saying it would take 30 years to be able to deal with this situation. What are your thoughts? Well, um, firstly, I think that um, successive governments have failed Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And if it were um, in, in a different jurisdiction, I'm sure you'd have seen a class action against the federal government of Nigeria by Nigerians who have suffered particularly from the overflow um, from Cameroon, I think. Um, you, if you are meant to have built a dam there, which, by the way, would have helped irrigation mm -hmm. and helped our farmers. So we need a government that is responsive, but most importantly, that looks ahead, mm. plans ahead for the people of this country not just in relation to um, what has happened yes. now. And we, when you look at areas like Lagos, uh, places that are under... Well, the, we've also been given, issued yes. a report that um, we might have to face some, you know, water situation here on, on the You're island. You're a lucky person, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I, I do apologize. Those in Lekki would not like the fact that I'm joking about that. Yeah. But um, it, it's, um, it's, it's a shame. One... Yes, government has a point. Mm -hmm. We are not clean people. The drains are full of debris, mm -hmm. plastics, and what have you. Mm -hmm. That's on, on one part. On the other part, you don't tell us as government that, oh, we told them to move, they didn't move. But where are the people moving to? Because I'm also exactly. I'm, I'm asking, is there a place for these people? Because the 612 people have died so far. It's Thousands high, of people amount. have lost you know, their homes. So where is there like a resettlement plan? Is there something? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Talk is cheap. Government hasn't um, grabbed the bull by the horns. They're not planning. They're not saying. I was just going to say, when you say we told them to move, mm. when they want to come and take your land that has CFO, I know mm. the government in Lagos, they'll, they'll act immediately. Mm. They will say, oh, we told them to move two, the, two years ago. They didn't move. Look at the joke um, that we have with Echo Bridge hmm. and Akpogbo. That place was burnt, when was it, uh, under the bridge. And you said people will no longer be under the bridges. They're still there. We can drive around tonight. 
under Carter Bridge, under what you have people there. So this government also, not, not just this government, successive governments have played just lip service hmm. to all these things. You understand? So it's a shame, and I believe that we should look for leaders, especially, the, we, we have an advantage here now. There are four people. There are 16 people. No, hang on. There are four yeah. that you keep talking about. At mm -hmm. times you say three. Out of those, they have all been in government. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's easy to say, what has this man done? One was vice president, two terms. One was senator for a short time and um, twice governor. The other one, twice governor. And of course, you know my man, he's gone through legislative and whatever and whatever. Okay, what did they do? What did they do then? And um, what was the effect? And where have you moved the people? We're talking about Konkozo, but if someone else says that, oh, I um, developed, um, I made some, somewhere a mega city, hmm. you didn't. You met it as a mega city. A mega city has nothing to do with, except with um, population. Mm -hmm. Lagos was a mega city. We knew Lagos when it was good, when we could walk the streets, but now the touts are in control. Mm -hmm. They're controlling the transportation system, making it more expensive for Lagosians. And that's what you want to go and replicate, um, do in Nigeria? You know, but as I said, the, we start talking from next week. Hmm. Let the, let the um, because if I talk now, people will say, oh, where's your old manifesto? Let it come out by God's grace on the 1st of November. And um, the manifesto will be there. And I'm sure it will be online. And then the blueprint that, um, as I said, is broken into three parts on each topic mm. um, will be there. And then we can discuss it, have discussions with Nigerians. And they will know that we have decided that it's going to be a campaign based on issues. Mm. We're not going to be throwing or hurling insults at other candidates. It's going to be based on issues. And as far as I'm concerned, you come to Nigerians and say, look, this is it. This is where we can get you in the next four years and lay foundations for the next eight to how many years. Mm. If you choose to vote that way, fantastic. If you choose to vote based on inducement or whatever, doesn't matter. The fact remains that it's a democracy. A majority Always must um, have the, wind have the way. Yeah. But we urge everyone to get involved. All right. Well, always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Ladipa Johnson is a spokesperson for the Kwankwaso Campaign Council. Uh, we're hoping that after Monday we could have you, know, you back here to talk more. We'll send you an electronic copy. Okay, great. Okay. Well, that's uh, the show for now. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we will be talking about good governance and accountability at the grassroots level. Stay with us.